Patterns Solving Problems Using Patterns Part 1 Identifying Patterns Hi friends, welcome back. Today we are solving problems with patterns. And you know what? There are patterns everywhere. That's right, patterns are important because, well, they're pretty, but they also help us know what comes next and today we're going to practice using them to solve problems. But before you can solve the problems, you have to notice the pattern. pattern. I'm going to see if you can notice the pattern with our squeaky clean pigs. How many pigs do we have up here? One, One two, two, three, four, four five. five. Show me five fingers. Those are your squeaky clean pigs. This is your mud puddle. Yeah. All right, so here we go. You might want to listen the first time and then join in. Five pigs so squeaky clean, cleanest you've ever seen, wanted to go outside and play. Oink, oink. One jumped into the mud, landed with a big thud. <gasps> oh no. Now there are four pigs squeaky clean. You have your four fingers up? Good. Katie, did you show them how their pigs could land in the mud? I did. You yeah. do it with your fingers and I'll do it up here. Four pigs so squeaky clean, cleanest you've ever seen, wanted to go outside and play. Oink, oink. oink. One jumped into the mud, landed with a big thud. <gasps> oh no! Now there are three pigs squeaky clean. You got it, let's do a little faster. Three pigs so squeaky clean, cleanest you've ever seen, wanted to go outside and play. Oink, oink. oink. One jumped into the mud, landed with a big thud. Now there are two pigs squeaky clean. Two pigs so squeaky clean, cleanest you've ever seen, wanted to go outside and play. Oink, oink. One jumped into the mud, Oh, landed oh, with a big thud. Now there is one pig squeaky clean. One pig so squeaky clean, cleanest you've ever seen. Wanted to go outside and play. Oink, oink. She jumped into the mud, landed with a big thud. <gasps> uh oh. Now there are no squeaky clean pigs. Oh. Did you notice a pattern there? That's right. There was a growing pattern because every time we re-sang the song, another pig jumped into the mud. So our rule was we added one more dirty pig every time. You know what? I also noticed a decreasing pattern. That's right. Every time a squeaky clean pig jumped into the mud, that group of pigs decreased, so we had fewer clean pigs. That's exactly right. Sometimes though it can get a little hard to keep track of the numbers of how many are clean and how many are dirty. Sometimes you may have noticed that when I sang, I couldn't remember what number I was on That's right. because I couldn't follow along very well. So we can use tools that will help us keep track. Katie's gonna get a chalkboard out right now and she's going to show us one of those tools. That's right. I'm going to put our piggies over here. Let me get the chalkboard. Come on, piggies. Stand in so you can see it. All right, we're going to use a T-chart to help us keep track of our pattern. What's so a T-chart? I'm, I'm going to show you what it looks like on the board, and then I want you to think about why we call it that. Let's see. I like tea. I like some sweet tea, too, but... A different kind of tea. That's exactly this kind of tea. Do you know why we call it a T-chart now? Yeah, what letter do you see up here? It's like a big letter T. And remember, right. this chart is a tool that's going to help us organize our data. That's right. So we need to label our sides of the T chart. One side is going to be for our squeaky clean pigs. So I'm going to put a nice squeaky clean little pig up here. He has no mud on him. Then the other side is going to be for our muddy, messy, dirty pigs. <laughs> See how he has a big spot of mud on him. 
Okay, so now we have our T chart labeled and we can clearly see one side is for clean pigs, one side is for the dirty pigs. We're going to use numbers on our T chart to help us keep track. So before we start singing the song, let's look and see what numbers we need to start with. Okay. We count. want to find out how many clean pigs we have on our board. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five. We have five clean pigs. Awesome. So I'm going to write the number five right here. Okay. But there's nothing over here. All right. How many dirty pigs do we have? Zero. So I'm going to put the number zero right here. Awesome. We're starting with five clean and zero dirty. Now, while we sing the song again, we'll stop between and make sure we record it on our T-chart to help us keep track. All right, let's do it again. Five pigs so squeaky clean, clean as you've ever seen, wanted to go outside and play. Oink, oink. One jumped into the mud, landed with a big thud. Now there are four pigs squeaky clean. Let's make sure. Awesome, let's One, check our two chart. Two, three, four squeaky clean. That's right, so I'm gonna write four over here for our squeaky clean pigs. And one, one muddy. One muddy. Okay, we started with five and zero, and now we have four and one. Hmm, hmm. let's see if the pattern continues or starts to take shape as we keep going. Okay. Four pigs so squeaky clean, cleanest you've ever seen, wanted to go outside and play. Oink, oink. One jumped into the mud, landed with a great thud. Now there are three pigs squeaky clean. All right, let's record it. One, One two, two three. three. So I need to mark three on this side. How many muddy? One, One two. two. You may have to make your numbers a little smaller. Am I? I'm going to start making them a little smaller. Yeah. Okay. Do you see a pattern there? Hmm. I'm starting to see one, but I think we should keep going and see if it continues. Okay. So we have how many clean ones? Three. Three. Whoa, that was easy. Three, Three kids. Kid. Not kids. <laughs> Let's try it again. <laughs> Three kids. So squeaky clean. Cleanest you've ever seen. Wanted, Wanted to, to go, go outside and play. Oink, oink. oink. One jumped into the mud, landed with a great thud. Now there are two pigs squeaky clean. That's right. So let's record our two right here for our squeaky clean pigs. One, two. There you go. All right, those numbers a little smaller. One, two, three. Three on this side. Hmm, I'm seeing a pattern. Me too. Do you notice a pattern with the numbers? Let's see. If we can figure out what comes next and then sing and check and see if we're right. Okay. If we can do it. I'm going to guess. I think that this is the decreasing pattern because the numbers are going larger to, to smaller, smaller. So they're decreasing. Five, four, four three, two. two. Oh, do you think it may be a... Uh, All right, I'm going to write our prediction up here. I think it's a one. And we'll check. Okay, I'll write that one. Okay, what about the other side? I think that one's a growing pattern because it seems to be getting bigger. Zero, Zero one, one, two, three. three. They think it Good might prediction. Be four. Let's see. Let's write that prediction up there. All righty. Let's do the song and see if you have solved the problem with a pattern. Two pigs so squeaky clean, cleanest you've ever seen, wanted to go outside and play. Oink, oink. One jumped into the mud, landed with a big thud. Now there is one pig squeaky clean. You guys were right. One pig squeaky clean. And how many dirty? One, one two, two, three, four. four. Our prediction was correct. You guys have started to see the pattern. All right, we've got one more. Let's see. Okay. One pig so squeaky clean, cleanest you've ever seen, wanted to go outside and play. Oink, oink. She jumped into the mud, landed with a big thud. Now there are <gasps> no pigs squeaky clean. So I'm at a zero down there. How many pigs do we have that are dirty? One, two, three, four, five. And, oh, I almost ran out of room in my t-chart. <laughs> so There's you see how five. we were using a t-chart to keep track of our numbers. It's really important to record your data 
and to keep track of your pattern. And it just makes your pattern that much more visible. Mm -hmm. You can see it a lot better. Sure I can. think you might enjoy the next read aloud. This book is called, If You Give a Pig a Pancake. I think you'll enjoy it because there are a lot of if then. As you're listening to it, see if you can figure out what the pig will want if you give it one thing. Then what's it gonna want? Enjoy the read aloud. If you give a pig a pancake by Laura Numeroff, illustrated by Felicia Bond, read with permission by Harper Collins Publishers. If you give a pig a pancake, she'll want some syrup to go with it. You'll give her some of your favorite maple syrup. She'll probably get all sticky, so she'll want to take a bath. She'll ask you for some bubbles. When you give her the bubbles, she'll probably ask you for a toy. You'll have to find your rubber duck. The duck will remind her of the farm where she was born. She might feel homesick and want to visit her family. She'll want you to come too. She'll look through your closet for a suitcase. Then she'll look under your bed. When she's under your bed, she'll find your old tap shoes. She'll try them on. She'll probably need something special to wear with them. When she's all dressed, she'll ask for some music. You'll play your very best piano piece and she'll start dancing. She'll want you to take her picture, so you'll have to get your camera. When she sees the picture, she'll ask you to take more. Then she'll want to send one to each of her friends. You'll have to give her some envelopes and stamps and take her to the mailbox. On the way, she'll see the tree in your backyard, so she'll want to build a tree house. So you'll have to get her some wood, a hammer, and some nails. When the tree house is finished, she'll want to decorate it. She'll ask for wallpaper and glue. When she gets, when she hangs the wallpaper, she'll get all sticky. Feeling sticky will remind her of your favorite maple syrup. She'll probably ask you for some. And chances are, if she asks you for some syrup, she'll want a pancake to go with it. I have pigs, and these pigs are super sweet pigs. There are a lot of different color pigs too. These pigs are super sweet and they like to eat something that's super sweet. Not only do they like to eat it, but they like to hide it. So we're gonna play a game today and see if you can guess where this super sweet treat is. Can you guess what the super sweet treat is? We just read a book about it. What do you think the pigs like to eat? Yes, you're exactly right, it's pancakes. So behind one of these pigs is a stack of pancakes. Let's see if you can find it. You'll need to do a pattern with me, a pattern clap. We'll start off with the color of an apple. Katie, what do you think is the color of an apple in here? There may be a couple of them. Mm, I like red apples, so probably red. Let's try it with red. Red piggy, red piggy, let me see. Do you have yummy pancakes for me? I'm gonna let you pick the red one off. Oh, he doesn't have any yummy pancakes. No yummy pancakes. All right, let's see if you can figure out which color is the color of a banana. That's a little easier. Okay, let's do it. Yellow piggy, yellow piggy, let me see. Do you have yummy pancakes for me? <sighs> Not a no. yellow one. All right, Katie, which one do you want to do this time? Um, this one's my favorite color, so I think we should do the pink pig. Okay. Pink, pink piggy, pink, pink piggy, pink. let me see. Do you have yummy pancakes for me? I'm excited to check this one. 
<laughs> no pancakes. Okay, it looks like we've done three. And we have three, three left. left. Sounds like a pattern to me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see if you can figure out which color is like the sky. Which color looks more like the sky? Let's do it. Blue piggy, blue piggy, let me see. Do you have yummy pancakes for me? No, he doesn't have any yummy pancakes. So we have used four, we've tried four, and we have two left. How about the color of grass? Good idea. Okay. Green, green piggy, piggy, green pigger, let me see. Do you have yummy pancakes for me? <gasps> he does! He found it, that's awesome. There are the pancakes. Pretty yummy there. You can play this at home with your family too. If you want to make some piggies, maybe out of construction paper, you could do it like that. Um, you could also try it with socks too. If you have different colored socks, that's you an could awesome put something idea. underneath or inside the sock. Oh, what a good idea. Yeah. So you could say red sock, red mm -hmm. sock, let me see. Oh my goodness, that's a great idea. So that's a way that you can practice your patterns and have fun playing a game too. STEM Extension, Pigs on a Boat. Materials, pennies, lids, aluminum foil, or other materials you can find around the house. Hey, we're back. It's time for our first experiment or extension. Today, we're gonna do pigs on a boat. So let me tell you what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a container with some water in it. You'll need some piggies. Mm, today we're using pennies, but pretty close. So your pennies are piggies. Um, I have about 30 of them, if you can find them and put them in a little container. You're gonna need some lids that we're gonna um, look at as boats. You'll need some pieces of aluminum foil. I just got two and a towel in case you get water places and a place to record your numbers. We're gonna use our handy dandy chalkboard mm -hmm. again. So first of all, you're gonna estimate how many pennies it or piggies it takes to make your boat sink. An estimate is just a really good guess. So I wanna hear your estimates of how many piggies you think it's gonna take to make this boat sink. Here's your boat. Here's your pity. All right, let's put this in here. What's your estimate? How many piggies or pennies do you think it's gonna make, take to make your boat sink? What do you think, Katie? Hmm, I think 10. She thinks 10. Okay, put a K up there. Let's do a T-chart. Katie thinks 10. I'm gonna say 20. You want to show our friends? Yep. Okay. okay. Here we go. All right. I wrote the word estimate because that's what we're practicing. And then right here, our purple boat. I think, I put a K for Katie, that it's going to be 10 pennies. And then the boat will sink. And Miss Sarah thinks 20. All right. Let's get started. Count with me. One. One two, two. Oh, you made me right. Three. three start to sink. Four. Five. five Six, seven, seven, eight. eight. Ah! Oh, there it went. So neither of us were right, but who was closest? Katie. Now I had one of those pennies that kind of leaned up against the side. I'm gonna try it again. One, two, and put them in the middle. Three, oh, oh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah! Nine, 10. Ooh. Oh, there it sunk. Um, so it kind of depends <laughs> on your you placement. Yeah. And if somebody bumps your water. Okay, so your result was, let's say eight, because that's what the first result was. Okay. Awesome. So there's our predictions. We have 10, 20, and then the real answer, or I wrote results for eight. Yeah, it's no longer a T chart though, although I still see another T. Yes, this one's just for our answers. Awesome. Okay, I have another boat. Now this one's a little different from the purple boat. How is it different? You're right. The white one is bigger than the purple one, but take a look at the edges. The purple one has a little bit more of a lip 
than the white one does. Let's see how this one does. I'm gonna put that boat in that there to float. Okay, we've got our white boat. So we both need to make our estimates and then we can find our results. What do you think? Um, I think 15. Okay. I'm going to guess lower. I'm gonna guess eight this time. Because, let me tell you why, my lip is not as deep and I just don't know. I just think it's gonna take fewer. I'm making a good guess or an estimate. All right, here are our estimates. 15 and eight, let's find our results. One, two, two three, three, four, four five, five, I don't know. Five, six, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Ah, so what, it was about 23. 23, mm -hmm. 23, awesome. Wonder why I was so off. <laughs> I was really off on that one. I had a guess. What's your guess? Well, if you look at the white lid, when you put all of the pennies on there, uh -huh. there's a lot more space. So you can put a penny here, penny here, penny here, and spread them out. But if you put them all in the same spot, like if you put them all on one side, uh -huh. I bet that side would sink faster. Maybe. That's my guess. Well, you find different boats at home to try and then find, a, find an adult or a, your brother or your sister and have them guess or estimate how many pennies that you, they think. And have fun with this and see who was right. Now, when we were counting a minute ago, I kind of got lost in the counting. So, if you need to keep track of how many pennies, you can make a thing that's called tallies. Katie, can you show them how to make tallies? Yep. We'll make them while we do the purple one one more time. Are these four? Yeah, we are. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Do you see how she makes a mark for each one of her one of the mm -hmm. pennies that go in there. And when you get to five, you do your line sideways. We like to say one, two, three, four, then close the door. Okay. That way it's in groups of five. Good. So now we're on six, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten. ten. Really sideways. One, two, three, four. Oh. Close the door. Ah, Next so time. we got to 10. Mm -hmm. So a group of five and a group of five, five plus five is 10. Yep. But it just helps me to remember that was 10. So you've learned about tallies today too. Now, you can find your own boats or you can make your own boat. That's why we have the aluminum foil. Oh, Here's I was yours. wondering about that. Here's mine. So, these are some little boats. Yes, they are gonna be little. So you can make your own boat. I'm gonna make mine a little thicker. Looks like Katie's given hers an edge. I'm gonna roll mine. And let's see how many pennies will float on our aluminum foil float. You know, when we did these, it was interesting how they came up with different numbers, different amounts of pennies. And I think some of the things that might have changed it was the shape of the boat. Mm -hmm. Um, the thickness of it, but it was also how hard I dropped it. So we may try to be consistent with these and drop them carefully each time instead of thud, thud, thud. Right. That's what I was doing. There's my boat. Oh, okay. I'm going to do mine a little different. I'm going to do it a little bit like a bowl. I like your boat, but I kind of want mine to be a little bit different. Let's make an estimate. How many do you think are gonna float, make that, how many do you think it's gonna to take to make that boat sink? You wanna do the pennies this time? It's yeah. really quite fun. Let's see, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna guess seven. Okay, I'm gonna guess 10. Okay. One, oh. two, two, three, three four, four, five, five six, six, seven, seven. wow, eight, eight. Nine, ten, eleven. Oh, it's starting to sink. Twelve. It is, isn't it? Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Wow. 
Uh -oh. You made a good bet. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Whoa. I think it's almost sunk. 30, 31. Third, oh no! 31. There it goes. It's touched in the bottom. The water got in the sides. That's awesome. That was a great boat. I have a yeah. lifter there. Yeah. You might want to make your boat kind of like Katie's. Hers has big edges. Let's see how mine does. Remember, mine's kind of like a bowl. Okay. How many do you goes. think it's going to take to make mine sink? Um, seven. I'm gonna guess three. <laughs> <laughs> One, One, two, two three, four. four. Uh oh. Five. Five. Your estimate seems a little six. Closer. Seven. Yeah. Eight. Eight nine, nine. Ten. ten. I'm really surprised. Eleven. Eleven twelve. twelve. There, there it goes. goes. Yeah, that was twelve. Wow, this is great. We have learned a little bit about sink and float here. We've learned about estimates or good guesses, and we've learned about tallies. Mm -hmm. um, you might wanna try this at home. This is, not only is this on video, but it's also on an extension sheet online. So you can have your parents print it out for you, but this is something I think you could do by yourself mm -hmm. or with a family friend. Have fun. Part two, Penny Problems. Sarah, have you ever done a job or a chore at home and then you earned money for doing that chore and then you got to use the money to buy something? Yes, and I love to go shopping. Sometimes I'll buy candy, sometimes I'll buy arts and craft stuff, sometimes I'll buy clothes, and sometimes I'll even buy pizza. Mmm, I love pizza. That's one of my favorite foods. And in fact, we have a song that we like to sing about pizza. Remember that song? We do, but the only problem is it's got... 10 pizzas so that's that's a lot to keep track and i do yes. not know if a a t-chart is going to keep our records straight. yeah i agree because i we had five pigs earlier and i ran out of room on our t-chart so it didn't really work um i don't think it would work with 10 but i'm thinking about something that we use when i teach first graders we like to use 10 frames to keep track of counting have you ever seen a 10 frame before i haven't what's it look like all right here's what a 10 frame looks like uh -huh. It's a big rectangle, and let's see, let's count the number of squares inside, and that'll give you a hint on why we call it a 10 frame. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there are 10 windows, and they are framed. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm going to remember this is called a 10 frame. 10 frame. How do we use a 10 frame? Well, when you're counting objects, you can put them inside the 10 frame to keep track of how many you have. When you look at a 10 frame, it makes it a little bit easier to see how many you have instead of having them scattered all over the place. So like this, right? Um, not quite. You have to have one object in each square because a 10 frame can only hold 10 objects. So I have... So if we have 10 pizzas... There will be one pizza in each... That's right. ...frame. That's the name, a 10 frame. All right. And those pizzas are stuck together. There we Do go. you know you have 10 pizzas? Did we have one fall? There we go. Pizza. Awesome. All right. Now ten for pizzas. our song, we're going to need 10 pizzas. Do you have 10 pizzas? Good. And we're going to need 10 pennies. Which we're going to use these as pennies. To look like pizzas. Yeah, I have sauce. all the pennies. <laughs> so are you going to come buy the pizzas from me? Yes, I will come buy the pizzas. And when I buy the pizza, I'll give you a penny. Okay. And I'll take the pizza from the tin frame. I love it. All right. How about you just put the penny where the pizza was? Perfect. <laughs> That's okay. This is going to be... Non-contact pizza delivery yes. <laughs> right there. <laughs> okay, show me your 10 pizzas. Okay, it goes like this. 10 pizza pies in the pizza shop, big and round with pepperoni on top. Along came Katie with a penny one day. She bought a pizza and took it away. Okay, let's take a look at our 10 frame now. How many pizzas are left in the pizza shop? One, one. two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. How many pennies does the pizza shop have now? Just one. One penny, because I paid one penny and got a pizza. Let's do Good our pizza. song again. Nine pizza pies in the pizza shop. Big and round with pepperoni on top. 
Along came Katie with a penny one day. She bought a pizza and took it away. Okay, let's update how many pizzas are in the pizza shop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the eight pizzas and how many pennies? One, two. Good job. Looks like a pattern to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eight pizza pies in the pizza shop. Big and round with pepperoni on top. Along came Katie with a penny one day. She bought a pizza and took it away. So how many pizzas do we have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And how many pennies? One, two, three. Mm -hmm. We have an increasing pattern and a decreasing, decreasing pattern. pattern. Let's go a little faster. Seven pizza pies in the pizza shop. Big and round with pepperoni on top. Along came Katie with a penny one day. She bought a pizza and took it away. One, two, three, four, five, six pizzas. How many pennies? One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Increasing and decreasing. Six, six pizza pies in the pizza shop. Big and round with pepperoni on top. Along came Katie with a penny to pay. She bought a pizza and took it away. Ah! Ooh! Now take a look at our tan frame. We have one, two, three, four, five pizzas. Mm -hmm. And how many pennies? One, one two, two, three, four, five. five. It's, it's equal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little bit of symmetry there. Five pizza pies in the pizza shop. Big mm -hmm. and round with pepperonis on top. Along came Katie with a penny one day. She bought a pizza and took it away. Whoa. Not a lot of pizzas left. You know what we could do? We could kind of do a little trick here. Mm -hmm. I know that there are how many pennies up top? Five. five. I remember because this is always going to be five. So I could say five, six mm -hmm. pennies and how many pieces of pizza or pizzas? One, two, three, four. Four. So exactly we kind of right. cheated right there, but well, it's actually called counting on. If you know you have five at the top, then you can just keep going. You start at five, and you count on to six. Awesome. So we've got four pizzas, four, four pizza, pizza pies, pies in the pizza shop, big and round with pepperoni pizza. on top. Along came Katie with a penny one day. She bought a pizza and took it away. Let's practice our counting on. Five, five six, six, seven. seven. Good. Seven pennies, one, two, three pizzas. Three pizza pies in the pizza shop, big and round with pepperoni on top. Along came Katie with a penny one day. She bought a pizza and took it away. Count on. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight pennies and how many pizzas? Just one, two. two. Good, because I'm running out of money. <laughs> <laughs> two pizza pies in the pizza shop. Big and round with pepperonis on top. Along came Katie with a penny to pay. She bought a pizza and took it away. Wow. Yeah. We Let's have count the pennies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we wanted to count on, we'd start here with five, six, seven, eight, nine pennies, and one, one pizza. pizza. One pizza pie in the pizza shop, big and round with pepperonis on top. Along came Katie with a penny one day. She bought my last pizza <laughs> and took it away. All right, do we have any more pizzas left? No, looks no like pizzas. I'm gonna have to close the shop but I do have lots of pennies that mm -hmm. I can use to buy more supplies. How many pennies do we have? Well, let's, that's a lot to count. So let's start with our five. Five, six, six seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten. ten. Mm -hmm. Should we double check it? Yeah. Go ahead. One, One two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. Ten pennies, which reminds me of Penny problems. Mm, I like penny problems. Do you? I do. Okay, good. Me too. Let's say that let's use our 10 frame right here. Okay. 
Let's say Katie came home and she had 10 pennies. All my pennies. And I was gonna go to the store and buy a piece of gum and that piece of gum cost five pennies. So I said, Katie, can I borrow five pennies? And I, of course, said, sure. Yes, but Katie was a little concerned because she wasn't sure how many pennies she would have left. That's right. So let's use this 10 frame to figure it out. So I have 10. I'm going to give five to Miss Sarah. Count with me. One, One two, two, three, four, five. five. How many pennies does Miss Katie have left? One, two, three, four, five. And we didn't even have to count that because if we remember from our pizza problems, that top row is always five. Mm -hmm. Guess what? When I went to the store, the gum was on sale. Ooh, I know. So I only had to pay three cents for it. So I had two pennies to bring back. Okay. So I'm gonna give that back to you so that I don't owe you as much money. I have two pennies back. One, should I start them over here or over here? Either way. Okay. One, two. So now. How many pennies do I have now? She had five and I gave her back two. So how many does she have? Should we count on? Yeah, let's try it. Five, five six, six, seven. seven. Katie so has seven. seven pennies. Well, then Mr. Steve came in the kitchen and he said, hey, yeah. I heard you had some money that you owed Miss Katie. How much do you owe her? And I said, I owe her three pennies. And he said, I have three. So he gave them to me so I could repay Katie. All right, Katie, I'm gonna give you back your three pennies. Okay, let's see, I have seven and she's gonna give me back three more. Let's see how many we have at the end. I bet you can find the total without even having to count. What do you think? What's the name of this? That's right, if you said 10 frame, you're right. So if every, Window frame in here is, has a penny in it. How many pennies are in there? 10. 10, that's right. 10 frames are an easy way to keep track of your numbers when you're adding or subtracting. So you might wanna try using a 10 frame at home with some of your penny problems. STEM extension, pretty pennies. Materials, pennies, soap, water, vinegar, lemon juice, lime juice. So we've been solving problems with penny, but then I noticed that my pennies had a problem. They weren't very pretty and they need to be polished up so that they're pretty when we go shopping. So what do you think is gonna be the best thing to polish up a penny? Do you think it's gonna be soap or white vinegar or lime juice? or lemon juice. I want you to make a guess. What do you think will make a penny pretty again? Do you think it might be soap and water? I think we can try that together. Let's see. Try it. I've got my dishes. I've got my soap. I have my soap in the water. I'm ready to go. Let's drop okay. a couple of pennies in there. Now, when I'm taking a bath, Usually I've got to do a little bit of scrub it oven. So we're gonna let them sit for just a second. And I'm gonna go ahead and take one and I'm gonna start scrubbing it in my fingers. And see if that helps any. Well, you know, it's not bad. Mm -mm. This one is pretty shiny. Find a really dirty one. Yeah, do that one with the spots. Okay, so this one turned out pretty good. Although the back of it is still a little dirty. Ooh, yeah, yes. show that one at the one. beginning. It's got all those spots on it. That's gross. See. We may have to, if it, the soap and water, yeah, scrub it good. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's coming off, Katie. I don't think so either. So the soap and water may not be doing the trick. Helped a little bit, but still lots of big spots on there. Yeah, that's kind of gross. So we're gonna try it here ourselves, you and me, with the vinegar the lime juice and the lemon juice. Which do you think is going to work? I think the vinegar. You think the vinegar? Yeah. I'm thinking it might be the lemon juice. So what I want you to do is I want you to find some different things that you can clean pennies with at home. Try the lemon juice, the lime juice, the vinegar, and the Dawn and see what you think is going to work um, and see what really works. I'd love to hear which one worked for you. Can you send it to us? Send us a picture. Part three, pizza problems. 
Okay, why don't we finish up our pattern practice today with some pizza problems? Sound good? Mm -hmm, I'm hungry. Okay, so I was hungry too, and I went and got a pizza from the store, and that pizza has eight slices on it. So, I think we should keep track of how many slices we have as we put them on the plate. Why don't we use a T-chart? Sounds like a good idea. Let me get this T-chart up here. And on one side, I have pizza, and on the other side, I have the word plate. This will help us keep track of how many slices we have in both places. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight slices of pizza. So go ahead and put eight under pizza. And we have zero on our plate. All right, now we're pretty hungry, so we better put a piece of pizza on that plate. All right, let's update our T-chart. How many pieces of pizza are left in the pizza? Let's do the easier one first. How many pieces of pizza are on the plate? Good question. That one's one. really easy to find out. <laughs> now, how many do we have left in our pizza? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very good. Okay. I'm pretty hungry too, so let's put one on that plate. Yeah, gotta have two pieces. Okay, now we have two. Let's go easy. Plate first. Yep, that is easier right now. One, two, three, four, five, six pieces of pizza are left. Six. Do you see patterns? Let's try one more and then we'll try predicting some. Okay. Okay, let's take another piece, put it on the plate. Now we have one, two, three on our plate. And how many do we have in the pizza? One, two, three, four, five. Five. Pizza. Let's take a look at our T chart. So here's our pizza. We started out with eight pieces, then we had seven, seven six, five. five. What did we come next? I heard some people say four mm -hmm. because each time we're taking a slice away. That's our pattern. It's our decreasing. That must mm -hmm. be our rule. our rule. Take one away. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do the same with the other side. On this side, we're not taking pieces away. What's happening? We're adding one each time. Mm -hmm. So if we add one, we have zero, one, two, three, four. Wow, it's the same number. Oh, I love it. Okay, let's count and make sure. One, one two, two, three, four. four. One, one, two, two three, three, four. four. They're right. equal. Yep. Okay, still hungry. Let's get another piece of pizza going here. Now we have how many pieces on the plate? Let's just follow our pattern. Um, we're adding one to the pizza, so four. one, four, five. Five comes after four. And we're taking away on this side. Eight, eight seven, seven, six, six five, five, four, three. Three. Let's count and make sure. Easy one first. One, two, three pieces of pizza. Three pizza. One, two, three, four, five. Five on the plate. Wow. They were right. You can use patterning to solve these problems. I took another piece of pizza and put it on my plate. Ooh, it's easy to see how many pieces are left. Mm -hmm. Two. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Good job, Katie. Which one, how many do you think um, we're gonna have left in the pizza? What's coming next with that next number? Can you six, guess? Five, four, three, two. It's like the blast off. Mm-hmm. One, she thinks one. Um, let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven comes next. So let's guess seven without even counting. Okay, let's put one over. My plate's getting full. Mm -hmm. Hey, one piece left. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, good. Awesome. Last piece of pizza. If we take it away, we will have zero, zero pieces up here. How many on our plate? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces on eight our pieces plate. On the plate. That's right. You know what? I have one plate that's full of pizza, but I really want to share with you and I'd like to share equally with you. So I want you to have the same number of pieces that I have because that's just fair. So why don't we just like take the pieces that we want and see if we shared it. Okay. So I know I want this one. I just want that. This piece looks good. Yeah. All right, here's our plate. Okay, what do you think? Did we share it equally? Mm -hmm. I think you might have way more pizza than me, Miss Sarah. It looks like it. So. I only have one, two pieces. How are we gonna share equally so it's fair? Hmm, let's put them back on the plate and see if we can try that again. You know, when we play games, like card games, 
we take turns. Mm -hmm. You'll do one, then I'll do one. Then you'll pick a card, then I'll pick a card. That sounds kind of like a pattern. Yeah. Miss Sarah, then Miss Katie. Miss Sarah, then Miss Katie. So if we took pieces of pizza that way and used that pattern, I bet we'll have equal amounts. Yeah, that would probably solve our problem, wouldn't it? Okay. okay let's try that pattern. Okay, so Miss Sarah, go? are you going to take a yeah, piece? you go okay. first. Miss Katie takes a piece. Uh-oh, they're falling down. And I'll take a piece. Okay, Miss Katie takes a piece. And I'll take a piece. And I'll put that one back up. Miss Katie takes a piece. And I'll take a piece. Miss Katie takes a piece. And I'll take a piece. Oh, we don't have any pieces left. Let's see, did that solve our problem? Were we able to share this time? One, one two, two, three, four pieces for me. One, two, three, four. And four pieces for you. Awesome. So that pattern did help us solve our problem. So if you're ever sharing something with a friend and you're trying to share evenly, then you can use a pattern to help you. Let's review. So today we did a lot of things. We used patterns to help us solve problems. Sometimes when the numbers get pretty big, you need to have a way of recording and organizing your information. Part so of our T chart. Mm -hmm. And we also use the 10 frame today to record. You can do this at home too. Um, you can do it on paper, if you have a chalkboard or a whiteboard, but you can use these patterns to solve your problems. Next week, we're going to go into coding. Oh, you mean like secret codes? Yeah, like secret codes. So um, exciting. It is. Coding is learning how to follow directions and then using those directions over and over again. So it should be pretty fun. We hope that you'll join us again next week when we learn about coding. And don't forget everything we did today, you can find at auburndayschool.com and try it out yourself at home. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for tuning in.